I think just about all of us have seen one of those movies with the riveting motivational speech. Most of the time you'll see them in movies that have battlefields of sorts, whether it be an action movie or a sports movie or even a movie about social change. Usually what happens is one of the main characters will step in front of the troops or step in front of the team. And he or she will speak about the reality of the situation they're dealing with. But despite the odds, they owe it to themselves and to the people that they love to give it all that they've got. Now, we may be kidding ourselves to think that these speeches are a modern phenomenon. As a matter of fact, we find them in the earliest forms of written language. And we can even find a number of them in scripture. They are prophetic voices to help God's people Remember that they are the children of God, who made the universe, and still loves them so deeply. Now, this weekend, we hear the words from a number of prophetic voices. We hear a number of motivational speeches, starting with Isaiah in our first reading. He's giving a rally cry of sorts to the people of Israel. If you know the history of the Israelites, you'll know that it's a history of a lot of turmoil. And what he's doing is he's reminding that despite what their eyes see sometimes, that God is closer to them than they even realize. And he uses an image to help them understand this a little bit more. And it's an image that we can certainly understand as 21st century uh, Americans. He says, imagine, um, basically imagine a groom seeing his bride on their wedding day and how close the two are in the moment when their eyes meet. God is even closer than that. And St. Paul even picks up um, with motivation. But for this case, he's motivating one of his communities, the Corinthians. And he's reminding them that the God of the universe also created them and that he placed within each one of them a different gift. But the gift isn't just supposed to be kept there and locked away. Rather, the gift is meant to be used, nurtured. It's a matter of reminding themselves that God could have given the gift to anyone, but he chose to give it to that particular person. My friends, even in our gospel, Mary is motivating her son. It's just a matter of time before Jesus starts his public ministry. And deep down inside, he knows that when he starts this, the end means the cross. And you have to imagine that Jesus and his mother were very close, that he must have shared this with her. So when Jesus is approached by his mother, and his mother says that they have no wine, Basically, Jesus is asking her, Is this what you want me to do? Do you want me to begin now? And in her response, she's saying yes. Her last words in scripture, Do whatever he tells you. Now, my friends, when we hear motivation from the prophetic voices in movies that give these motivational speeches, I know it's enough to give a lot of us goosebumps. Now, who hasn't watched The Lord of the Rings or Braveheart and doesn't get goosebumps when the main character goes in front of the troops to gather them together to get them excited? We imagine for a moment, I think, in in these movies that we're there. But we also have to remember that Scripture is indeed the living Word of God. Its words are meant to inspire with wisdom from our ancestors and from the wisdom of God. These words can take us to another time and to another place so that we can bring them to the here and now. God is asking us through our baptismal call to be a prophetic voice in the world. Each person who was baptized as a Christian was baptized as a priest, prophet, and king. We see in the Old Testament a number of these prophets wrestling with this call. I mean, you simply just have to go and look. I mean, 
take Jonah, for instance, being eaten by a whale and spit out on land simply because he was wrestling with his call to be a prophet. I think when each of these prophets realizes that this is what God's calling them to, they draw themselves closer to God. They become more of who God made them to be. And what God is asking us is to take the time to pray and to listen, to be faithful. When we're looking for the proper motivation, and believe me, everybody looks for proper motivation, even priests, when it's hard to get out of bed sometimes, especially in the cold winter months. You know, we don't just have the skies tear open, this bright light shine above us, and butterflies and birds come out. You know, it's just as hard for priests sometimes as it is for you to get that proper motivation. But God's inviting all of us to read His Word, to read the Bible, to use that as motivation for ourselves. It's the book that's inspired more people than any other book in human history. I mean, people literally tattoo the words of Scripture on their bodies because they want that motivation to be with them always. They don't want to forget about it. Don't change something that's worked for so long. And as a prophet in this world, use the Word of God to transform your world and to transform the world.